Daniel Kutsar is a hate preacher at Shore Foundation Baptist Church, and he went viral last year for saying some very, very vile things about LGBTQ plus people. I mean, think of the worst thing that you've heard an elected Republican say and multiply that by 100. I mean, he is saying the quiet part loud, and what he's saying is indistinguishable from Nazi rhetoric, but nonetheless, he said it with his full chest. Let's listen. And, you know, and that's why a lot of uh, homosexuals, you know, they're reprobates, they hang themselves, they kill themselves. Why? Because they hate their life, because they rejected God, they know that God rejected them, they know there's no hope, and that's why they commit suicide, which is great. I hope every single homosexual dies. Yeah, so he sounds like a very nice guy. Now, after he made those comments, journalist Hamant Mehta posted a video of him saying those terrible things. He subsequently went viral. And he responded to the vi virality of that video by essentially doubling down and then playing the victim. Because I guess it's bad when you say something confidently and then somebody says that you said the thing. But either way, here's what he said in response. They, they hate themselves. They know they're wicked. And that's why a lot of times they commit suicide. And I, I said, that's great. You know, praise God. I'm happy that, you know, uh, I'm happy that, you know, they do that. But, you know, this guy, he posted this 20, 20 second uh, clip of me preaching that. And that video got like 127,000 views. Just like, and it's, it's crazy because I'm not, you know, I'm not ordained. I'm not a pastor. I'm not an evangelist. And it's like, why is he picking on me? It's like, okay, whatever. But, you know, I, I, I take back nothing. You know, <laughs> I agree. I still agree that, you know, I hope, you know, every sodomite of my dies. I, I hope every homosexual dies. I hope every faggot dies. The thing about, about on, on, on that video, you know, it has 127,000 views. That's a lot of views. But you know, it has a lot of comments. But it's not like, you know, like, like less than 1% of people commented on that video, which shows that it's very likely that out of those 127,000 views, you know, my, majority of them agree with me. Because if a majority of the people disagreed with me, there would have been like, you know, 10,000 comments, 20,000 comments. Uh, when you go to the comments, you know, most of the comments are, are basically people saying that I'm gay, <laughs> that I'm a homosexual. The real reason why the worst thing they can say to me is that, oh, you're gay, is because they know how vile and disgusting it is to be a sodomite. Mm, no, I think that they're calling you gay because you are conspicuously spending way too much time thinking and talking about gay people. It feels like you are probably externalizing your internalized self-hatred. And regardless of why you're saying it, it's not my problem. You're still saying vile, disgusting things, and you said this in public. So if people want to react to that by sharing your own words, then... I mean, if that makes you feel uncomfortable, you could just not say terrible things, but he doubled down and tripled down, and he hasn't stopped saying weird and terrible and hateful things about queer people. So this year, just a couple of weeks ago, Meta posted another video of him, this time talking about the app Duolingo and how it's been infiltrated by the homosexuals. One game that I play right now, I kind of consider it a game because it is kind of fun, it's called Duolingo. But even Duolingo, you know, Duolingo has been ill, Ill, infiltrated by, by, by homosexuals. You know, they, they teach, you know, uh, the worst thing that I saw that they taught, they, 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 they teach a few times, you know, his husband, you know, and just stuff like that, you know. And it's like, it's like the, it, the good thing is that whenever I see something that's, you know, that, that's factory, you know, I kind of report it, like, this is, this is wrong, this is incorrect, you know, I tell them that this is not right. And, I, I, and every language is different that, that you learn, but... You know, Duolingo, you know, it has been, you know, infiltrated by facts, so you got to be careful. So, that, so I'm sure every game out there has been facts, right? You know, it's a new word. <laughs> you know, I'm sure every, every game out there, they put facts in there, they put whores in there, they put drugs, murder. So, you know, that stuff is not going to help you. It's so hateful. <laughs> it's honestly stupid. It's hard to take what he's saying seriously, even though we should take it seriously because it's deeply, deeply vile. But he's so he's so stupid and hyperbolic in his vitriol towards gay people that you can't not laugh at what he's saying. But after Meta shared that video of him, he responded to Meta and actually accused Meta of inciting violence against him. He said, oh, I was wondering why I was getting death threats again this morning out of the blue. I thought, I bet Maher Beta is behind this. So he completely butchered his name. Sure enough, after sifting through your sea of Christian hate posts, there it was. Your dog whistle of death. Who is really inciting violence. Now, Meta responded saying, all I did was quote you, which is absolutely
absolutely true. And the church responded again, saying, when someone actually follows through with one of the many threats to rape and kill me, my family, and blow up and kill everyone in my church, including women and children and many other vile and filthy things threatened, what will you say? Wow. The irony just went right over his head there. I mean, obviously, I think this goes without saying, I don't condone the death threats against him and his church because unlike him, I'm not a violent person. I'm not a terrible person. But having said that, though, you expect him, Meta in this instance, to see how him just posting your own words is tantamount to him inciting violence against you, but you refuse to see how your vitriolic rhetoric towards LGBTQ plus people is inciting violence towards them. In fact, you hope it does because, as you said, you want them all to die. You want them to commit suicide and you celebrate every suicide that happens. So why is it that we have to see your humanity, but you refuse to see the humanity of LGBTQ plus people? It's okay for you to incite violence against gay people, but when they respond in a proportional way and incite violence against you, well, all of a sudden, are you violent? Are you inciting violence against me? Oh, I can't believe this. I'm clutching my pearls. I mean, I just, I feel like this is one of those instances where you very clearly don't like getting a taste of your own medicine. And if you can dish it, you better be able to take it. But very clearly, He's against this. Now, somebody had asked him on Twitter to follow up with evidence that he has, in fact, received death threats, and he did. He shared messages making direct threats of violence against him and his church. So, I mean, this is him learning the hard way that spewing vile hate and calling for the deaths of an entire group of people elicits a similar response towards him. I mean, is it not reasonable to respond to Nazis' threats of genocide against Jewish people with Jewish people saying, well, I hope you die first? I mean, that is a human response, right? So I don't, I don't know what he was expecting, honestly. Again, that doesn't mean that I condone the death threats against him. But if you don't want death threats yourself, then why would you condone death threats or incitement of violence against other people knowing how badly that feels? I mean, you should be able to sympathize with the gay people who you're demonizing because you know what it's like to be on the receiving end of violent threats, but he, he doesn't get it. He doesn't see the irony here, and none of the preachers in this movement do. So for those of you unaware, this individual is part of a brand of fundamentalism known as the New IFB, the New Independent Fundamentalist Baptist Movement, and they're known for saying horrific things about gay people. For example, as Alex Bollinger of LGBTQ Nation explains, the New IFB movement first got international attention when Pastor Stephen Anderson of the New IFB Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona, praised the pull shooter for killing 49 people in an LGBTQ plus nightclub, saying that the shooter killed a bunch of disgusting perverts and pedophiles. Quote, the good news is that there's 50 less pedophiles in this world, Anderson said in a sermon about the 2016 shooting. He said that the club was full of disgusting homosexuals who the Bible says were worthy of death. Anderson has been banned from dozens of countries for his extreme anti-LGBTQ plus and anti-Semitic statements, but he's not the only new IFB pastor who regularly calls for violence against LGBTQ LGBTQ plus people. Jonathan Shelley of the new IFB Steadfast Baptist Church in Texas celebrated the death of a gay man at the 2021 Wilton Manors Florida Pride celebration in a car accident. Later in the year, Shelley said that he would feel lucky if the Holocaust killed 6 million Jewish people and if mass shooters killed gay people. Quote, if someone walks into a homo bar and shoots a mall, shoots a bunch of homos and kill all of them, you know how many tears I'd shed for that? Zero, Shelley said, saying that he doesn't care how many of them die because they worship the devil. Pastor Dylan Oz of the same church said last year that the solution for the homosexual is murder. What does God say is the answer is the solution for the homosexual in 2022 here in the New Testament, here in the book of Romans? Oz asked that they are worthy of death. These people should be put to death. Every single homosexual in our country should be charged with the crime, the abomination of homosexuality that they have. He continued, they should be convicted in a law Awful trial, they should be sentenced with death. So this is the movement that Daniel Kutsar, this hate preacher, associates with. For years, they have called for the mass execution of LGBTQ plus people. But yet, after he and his ilk call for the deaths of gay people, he expects all of us to be sympathetic towards the violent threats that he's receiving. Don't expect sympathy from other people if you're calling for the murder of of an entire group of people if you're celebrating their suicides. So, I mean, if you're going to put that out into the universe, don't be surprised when it comes back 
right around to you. So if you don't like the violence being spewed towards yourself, maybe stop saying violent things towards LGBTQ plus people and people won't react in that way. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas.